So to get to know the person, player, who Swanson is, welcome in Braves broadcaster Chip Carey. Chip, it is great to see you, and we turn to you because, well, you watched Swanson for seven seasons. And exactly, I want to start with kind of who the person he is, on the field, off the field. Who did the Cubs get? Yeah, uh, he's a winner. Uh, he knows how to win. He came from a winning college program at Vanderbilt. He was the number one pick in the draft. Came to Atlanta when the Braves were in the midst of their rebuild. Debuted in 2016. And then the next season, uh, started a run of five consecutive division championships for the Braves. That's the on-field stuff. Off the field, this is a guy that became a leader in the clubhouse. I think he really learned under Nick Markakis, who came to the Braves kind of in similar circumstances that Dansby's gone to the Cubs, maybe a year or two ahead of schedule, but a guy that can really help set the tone and how to play winning baseball and how to be a leader in a locker room. Uh, the kids on our team gave Dansby the nickname the Sheriff, not because he ran around uh, yelling and screaming at guys, but he led by example, and obviously this year had perhaps the best year of his major league career and cashed in with the biggest contract that the Cubs have signed since Jason Hayward. So we're very sad to see Dansby leave Atlanta, but very happy that he's going to go to a place like Chicago where he could continue his winning ways and perhaps get another parade down Michigan Avenue this time in Cubs colors in the years to come. Absolutely. Of course, that's what Cubs fans are hoping for. You mentioned a really good year last year. Number that sticks out to me, I'm sure it does to a lot of people, that 162. Playing in every single game, it was 160 the year before that, as you know well. Also, I, I wanted to ask you to throw out a couple other numbers because that 5.7 war, according to baseball reference, and his outs above average, second best in all of baseball. So how does that translate to what you're seeing day-to-day -day on the field? Because it feels like sometimes you aren't even like recognizing those numbers as they're unfolding, and then the end of the season comes, and that's, that's where it is. Yeah, you're almost surprised when Dansby doesn't make a play. Look, Ron Washington, the Braves' third base coach, has been a remarkably huge influence in Dansby Swanson's career. You will see uh, Dansby doing his drills an hour before the game in the heat of the summer, day after day after day. And that reputation, has, repetition, I should say, has really helped Dansby improve defensively uh, in the Atlanta middle defense. And let's not forget, too, you've got new rules this year. The shift is gone. So guys with range, guys with strong positioning skills, guys with strong arms, and guys with high baseball IQs are going to be even more important than just raw athletes or guys that can be moved uh, to play in pull situations defensively. So I think Dansby is going to really relish those opportunities. I think playing in the thick grass at Wrigley Field is going to do nothing but help him. And as we know, the wind blows in and across at Wrigley more than it blows out. And that, too, is going to help Dansby and all the other infielders for the Cubs, which will make their pitching staff better, which I think will also help their uh, chances in the National League Central this year. Yeah, no doubt. You make a lot of good points there, especially with the rule changes. Now, one more on Swan. And on the personal side, Mallory Pugh, a Chicago Red Star, just the, the partnership that they have and what Chicago could be seeing in terms of them as a couple and what you know about them. Yeah, you know, uh, one of the most uh, rewarding things about doing the job that I have the good fortune of doing is seeing young men come to the major leagues where they're just sort of feeling their way out in the world as people. They become professional baseball players, then they become major leaguers, then they become major league regulars, then stars, and then they grow into adulthood, and then they take the step that Dansby has taken. This is a guy that's done everything right. He's an Atlanta kid. Uh, he never got into trouble, never caused a blip of problem on the radar. Uh, as you said, he plays every day. He represented his city, his town, his family extremely well. And uh, look, there's a, there's a bittersweet uh, tenor to this for us who, who love the Braves organization. Would have loved to have seen Dansby finish his career with the Braves. I think he would have liked that too. But it came very apparent that the marketplace was reward Dansby and justifiably so for a great year. And he and Mallory will do great in Chicago. And as I texted him the other day, I hope that he comes to love and admire Wrigley Field as much as I did in my time there and every player who has had the good fortune of wearing the Cubs uniform. It's a special place, and he'll do special things if you give him time. And, and I think uh, uh, Cubs fans will quickly fall in love with uh, Dansby the player and Dansby the person, too.